Happy Wednesday. We made it to the start of another day. It's the third day of June 2020. I am Dan Koontz. Welcome to Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. We're live here from Studio 3 in downtown Wenatchee. We've got a pretty good show for you today. Lots of news to get to. Not a bad looking weather forecast at all. Uh, if you watch this show on a regular basis, uh, you know one of the first things that we do is the weather forecast because uh, it's the one thing that affects pretty much everybody. Almost everybody wants to know what the weather is going to be like. And unfortunately, once we get through a couple more days of sunshine and nice temperatures, we're going to go the other way for the weekend. It's going to be a wet weekend, possibly. Anyway, it's uh, certainly shaping up to be that way. We could use the rain, but I'm one of those sunny, warm kind of guys. So we'll do a complete forecast in just a couple of minutes. we got sports to get to. We got news to get to. We have the obscure holiday. We got today in history. We got some celebrity birthdays as well. And everybody is entitled to, to Mike McGonty's opinion at 55 minutes after 55 minutes after the hour. 55 degrees. If it's 55 minutes after the hour, I can go home. <laughs> oh, it's 55 degrees outside of our studios. Good morning to Charity out there in beautiful Kashmir. Let's take our tour, shall we? Begin with what's happening out there. Our cross camera always bats lead off if it's available. I love the baseball analogy. Batting first, the cross camera. Of course, we call it the cross camera. It's not on the cross. It's adjacent to the cross at the very tip of Wenatchee Heights. As we look over the valley proper, we continue to green right up. Although it's been breezy. In fact, my good uh, friend uh, who works directly next to me in the bullpen. I'm not going to mention his name. I told you Raya would not mention his name. He says he's getting a little tired of the wind. And I can see that. The wind can kind of beat you down a little bit. And it has been breezy over the last few days. It's going to be a little breezy at times today and downright windy tonight. That's the nature of the beast. It's only the third day of June. We're, of course, the summer solstice isn't until Saturday the 20th. So we're still in spring and we still got quite a bit of spring to get to. And we associate spring around here with the wind. The mighty Columbia continues to roll right along. Good morning, Wenatchee Valley. All right, from this point forward, Megan gets to decide, ah, to downtown we go. That is the uh, camera on top of the Cascadian looking to the north along Wenatchee Avenue. That reminds me, uh, later on this morning, I will be checking in with Linda Hagland, the executive director of the Wenatchee Downtown Association. Of course, the downtown businesses have been taking a pretty good hit since uh, March with the stay home, stay healthy order. We'll check in with Linda, find out what's going on there. We'll see that interview tomorrow here on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. The Coast Hotel to your right and right down Wenatchee Avenue, heading to the north. Pretty light traffic. Oh, traffic is beginning to pick up closer to normal. I've run a few errands. I try to run as little errands as possible, I'm trying to do my part to uh, avoid exposing myself or being exposed for that matter. Uh, but I've noticed the traffic is beginning to pick up a little bit as I run around town. Camera three. Let's see where we're off to. That's the Rock Island camera, way up there on the ridge above Rock Island, the Rock Island Golf Course. Pretty busy over the weekend, I noticed. I drove by it once. There were quite a number of golfers out there at the Rock Island Golf Course. So you can see the East Wenatchee bench to the upper right-hand corner of your screen. Wenatchee, kind of out of view. Still see the Columbia, though. That's looking good. And way off in the distance, of course, is uh, the Clockham Ridge area and Mission Ridge. Beautiful view from the Rock Island camera. And good news for you golfers who like Crescent Bar. You can go golf at Crescent Bar now. Still got to do some uh, safe golfing, but still, it's better than not golfing at all. Good morning to our friends in Rock Island. Camera number four. It's the Omi Gardens camera. That is a cool view. Why does it look so much orangey, almost salmon colored from that view? I don't know why, because the sun's been up for a couple of hours. Actually, it came up uh, almost exactly two hours ago. At uh, 5.07, sunset tonight, 8.52. Days are getting longer and longer and longer. 15 hours and 45 minutes of daylight is what we're setting into today. And, of course, we'll have longer and longer days all the way up to June 20th, the summer solstice, and the days will gradually get shorter, but it's so gradual it's almost unnoticeable. Good view from our Omi Gardens camera as we look out over the Otabashian Oda Bridge. And, again, we've mentioned this before, the Columbia River is running high and running cold. And by the way, thanks to the viewer who phoned in yesterday after the show. We did the Two Rivers camera yesterday at the top of Lake Wenatchee. And I remembered that the White River flows into Lake Wenatchee, but I couldn't remember the name of the other river because we call it the Two Rivers camera. I forgot about the Little Wenatchee River. Felt like an idiot. I've spent so much time up there. Thank you for the correction. No brains, no headaches. That's my motto. 
Uh, National Weather Service set the slide down, and uh, whenever they do that, we like to throw it on up there. It gives you a pretty good idea what we're looking at for the weekend. Now, the next couple of days, still looking good, mild and dry. Things are going to start changing on Friday, and then Saturday, yeah, will be maybe about 70 degrees. That's the best chance, unfortunately, of measurable rain is a day that a lot of people like to get out and do things. Saturday, we're looking at uh, some rainy conditions. It's a possibility. Temperature's not very warm and uh, a little windy at times as well. So there's a weak weather system that's going to start picking up a little bit of steam. It's a slow mover. It's going to start spreading moisture around our area probably Friday night into Saturday and maybe even a chance on Sunday. So there you go. We're in for some wet weather this weekend. And that's okay because we, quite frankly, need, as we mentioned before, we need the rain. We're behind. We're in a drought. Even though we had a wetter than normal May, it's not making up for the fact that we had a very dry fall and not a particularly wet winter for that matter. All right, Patriot Plumbing, Heating and Cooling gives your home a hug. I can live with that forecast. Nice and mild and dry, quite a bit of sunshine. Now, we did have a few high passing cumulus clouds yesterday, so we had kind of a filtered sunshine kind of a day. We topped off at 78. We may be closer to 80 today for the simple fact that, number one, it's warmer right now. So we're starting that climb up the temperature ladder a little bit quicker with 55 degrees, and also we'll have more sunshine as opposed to the filtered sunshine. So 79 or 80, quite a bit of sunshine, northwest wind today, about 6 to 13 miles an hour. A uh, few clouds expected tonight, not going to stick around very long, 51 for the overnight low. Uh, it's going to be a little breezy, as I mentioned today. I'm going to call it windy tonight. A northwest wind 9 to 18 miles an hour will have gusts around 30 miles an hour at times tonight. We do it again on Thursday, lots of sunshine, maybe a little cooler. Again, a northwest wind on Thursday, about 6 to 13 miles an hour, gusts around 20 at times, so still going to be a little breezy today, tonight, and Thursday. Sorry, Uriah. Partly cloudy Thursday night, 55 for the over, uh, 53 for the overnight low. Thursday night, uh, very little wind. Friday is when things start to change. This is when the slow mover starts coming in. We'll cloud up on Friday. We'll have uh, some sunshine Friday morning. It's not going to last very long. Clouds will be coming in by midday. It'll be mostly cloudy, warm up to about 79 degrees. No real rain expected on Friday, but we do have a good chance of rain on Saturday. Wouldn't be surprised if it rained at all. Now, we're going to have partly cloudy skies. It's going to be about 50% clouds, 50% rain. Not 50% clouds, 50% sun, but we got a chance of rain, enough that we need to put it up there. We'll see highs in the lower 70s, which is a little bit below normal, 47 for the overnight low on Saturday night. Not expecting any rain on Saturday night. Could get some late afternoon rain on Sunday, 30% chance of some kind of precipitation. As you can see, cooler still. Also breezy at times on both Saturday and Sunday. Not a lot of wind just breezy, and they're not really giving us an estimate on miles per hour. We'll know more about how breezy it's going to be Saturday and Sunday by this time tomorrow, so be sure to tune in. Monday, we're going to do Sunday all over again. Yeah, it's going to be Groundhog Day on Monday, I guess, partly cloudy and 30% chance of rain, just like Sunday, same high, pretty much the same low. And then we go back to sunshine on Tuesday, highs in the lower 70s. Most of those temperatures right around normal, a little warmer than normal today tomorrow and Friday, then slightly below normal for our afternoon highs on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. And that's a look at your forecast from the National Weather Service. That way, if you don't like the weather, you can blame the government. Nine minutes after the hour, going to take a break and come back with your Wednesday morning news. You're watching Wake Up in Anchor Valley on the NCW Life Channel. Aging and Adult Care offers many in-home care options and services for seniors and family caregivers. But did you know they also offer free in-home delivered meals? Aging and Adult Care has expanded its program for home delivered meals to help elderly and vulnerable adults at this challenging time. If you are in need of prepared meals or know someone who could benefit, call Aging and Adult Care for more information about free home delivered meals. Call 509-886-0700. Hey folks, Carrie from Blueberry Hills. A chill is in the air and it's a perfect time for some old fashioned comfort food like our amazing Eggs Benedict, chicken fried steak, French dips, soups made from scratch, or fruit pies fresh from the oven. The crowds might be gone, but we're still here for you folks. So bring an appetite and a friend to Blueberry Hills in Manson, where you pick, you sit, you eat, and you visit. Open Wednesday through Sunday from eight to three, wildaboutberries.com. We're back at 10 minutes after the hour, mostly clear, 55 degrees. We'll be in the upper 70s to near 80 with quite a bit of sunshine, a little bit of wind 
Today and Thursday, the weather starts changing on Fridays. We cloud up and we're in for some cool and maybe even some wet weather on Saturday and Sunday. Here's what's making news. The Shaline Douglas Health District expects to submit a new application to move into the next phase of the COVID-19 recovery plan, and they plan to do that within the next few weeks. Governor Inslee's Safe Start Plan allows counties to move into phases of greater and greater economic activity as they show progress in the fight against coronavirus, especially a slowdown in the rate of infection, and that's the key. The two-county Board of Health voted Monday to make a new application after the first attempt was rejected last month. 27 of Washington's 39 counties have moved on now to phase two of the four-phase plan. Chief Medical Officer for the board, Dr. Malcolm Butler, says the new state guidelines appears to be within the reach of the district. After consulting with Dr. Rutherford and Barry and reviewing our ongoing performance, uh, I am comfortable recommending a graduated reopening of the economy. Uh, this uh, guidance from the governor does state that the first move is to have a recommendation from the health officer to move towards a variance, and I would like you all to hear this as my formal recommendation that we do so. Um, although our transmission rate is significantly higher than in other parts of the state, we are experiencing a low rate of severe disease. Our medically frail populations appear to be sufficiently insulated and our healthcare systems now have sufficient bed, PPE and testing capacity to reopen the economy. I would recommend that the Chelan Douglas Health District put together a work group of six thought leaders to develop a variance proposal which is strong enough to overcome the clear epidemiologic hurdle of having the second highest COVID transmission rate in the state. Now, the current rate of new COVID-19 cases in Chelan and Douglas County is, uh, is estimated at 93 per 100,000 people in the population. Well, they filed their lawsuits uh, back on May 22nd. They're seeking a quick end to Governor Jay Inslee's stay-at-home COVID-19 order. Now the plaintiffs are gonna have to wait until this afternoon to learn the fate of that case. Attorney Joel Ard withdrew one lawsuit against the governor in Douglas County to focus on the Chelan County lawsuit. That's now before Judge Kristen Ferreira. It features 46 plaintiffs. State attorneys want the case moved to Thurston County. The court held a preliminary hearing on Monday and here's some of what happened. We did file an amended complaint uh, we heard certainly from uh, your colleague in Okanagan who was sitting by designation in Douglas uh, concerns about the possibility that the Chelan Douglas County Health District could be subject to uh, different rules if there were different orders. I think your honor raised a uh, very similar concern on Thursday uh, when we uh, set out. Uh, we understood, uh, we certainly believed and still believe that venues proper in the home counties of the plaintiffs. Uh, and the plaintiffs uh, preferred to have a uh, venue in their respective home counties. Uh, out of an abundance of caution, I believe that we are filing, uh, even as we speak, uh, a motion to amend. I think that that's appropriate in the interest of justice. It addresses very specific concerns that both courts raised as to having a uh, division. Uh, it does add uh, into this court uh, most of the Douglas County plaintiffs. Uh, the members, uh, those plaintiffs, both in Douglas and Chelan County, who are members of the Chelan Douglas County Board of Health, uh, have withdrawn as plaintiffs, uh, given the uh, possibility of some other involvement by that entity, uh, so that they aren't uh, in any way playing two roles uh, in the litigation. I think we can kind of safely assume that plaintiffs correctly recognize that their complaint had a big problem with venue because they named the governor who is a state official acting in virtue of his office and the proclamation uh, was issued in Thurston County. And so the case arose there from, that's why they amended the complaint, obviously. But it's really a simple question here. It's whether when a state official issues an executive order, a proclamation in a state of emergency that has statewide effect, does the cause of action arise either in Thurston County where the proclamation was issued or everywhere? There's no middle ground that the court can reach here because plaintiff's claims do not hinge on their residence in Douglas County or in Chelan County. Their assertion of venue does not hinge on any specific event happening in Douglas or Chelan County. Their event hinges simply on the fact that the proclamation touches Douglas County and Chelan County and every other county in the state. I'm going to give the plaintiffs an opportunity 
to brief the issue of venue now that they've added additional parties. But I think the state has a right to have this, this venue motion heard as soon as possible. And um, I don't want too much time to pass because this is an issue that if it needs to be transferred to Thurston County, uh, that needs to be done sooner rather than later because this is, there are multiple lawsuits and we, I mean, the state is having to, f to fight this on multiple fronts and that is something that typically the statutes anticipate not to have happen. Plaintiffs in the Chelan County case include three Wenatchee City Council members, two pastors from Grace City Church, State Republican Committee Woman Marcy Collins, Windmill Restaurant owner Kevin Smith, and NCW Life host and former state representative uh, Carrie Kendata. A lot of folks from these parts gathered Monday night alongside the sidewalks of uh, Chelan Avenue in front of Memorial Park to protest the death of George Floyd. Here with coverage from that demonstration from Monday night, our very own Kyle Montgomery. try whatever and this is only the only thing that's here and I, I need to do something something is better than nothing I want to do more but um, at least happy to be out here and support about 1,000 people protested loudly but peacefully outside the Chelan County Courthouse and along Chelan Avenue Monday evening it was nothing like the scenes of violence and looting that have played out in other communities following the death of George Floyd a black Minneapolis man who died as a police officer kneeled on his neck for more than nine minutes Wenatchee protesters expressed their anger and frustration with speeches, chanting, and by waving signs as honking motorists passed. And witness police murder and brutalize us without repercussions. This is why we continue to demonstrate and engage in discussions about this. We deem necessary. At one point, a group of more than 100 people broke off to march from Chelan Avenue down Arondo Avenue, then north on Mission Street and past the Wenatchee Police Department before returning to the park. Wenatchee Police Captain Edgar Reinfeld said the police presence was intentionally minimal and he is not surprised there were no issues. So the reason, and one of the hugest reasons that protests and other demonstrations here in the Wenatchee area are successful is the way people choose to behave, first of all, but a huge component is almost uniformly organizers of these activities call us and we have frank conversations and we talk very simply ahead of time. We don't see the violence because we have a great community. We don't see the looting because we have a great community. We have people in our community who respect each other and respect the things that belong to each other enough that we don't have to do that. We have crime here, we have theft, we have problems, but thankfully we don't have those kind of problems because of the way people choose to be here and it's an amazing thing. Get registered to vote. Reporting with NCW Life, I'm Kyle Montgomery. Thank you for that report, Kyle. Wenatchee Valley College President Jim Richardson has weighed in on the death in, the, in police custody that sparked that national confrontations between protesters and police. In a statement on Monday to all college staff and students, Richardson called the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis, quote, evidence of systematic racism. End quote. He went on to say we should always uphold the worth and dignity of all people. Now more than ever, we have a responsibility to advocate for each other and our community. Close quotation. Richardson asked the Wenatchee Valley College community to care for each other and referred students to on-campus counseling service if they think they need it. Other news this morning. A cashmere man accused of exposing himself to school children will face no charges if he completes a mental health diversion program. 29-year-old Christopher Robert Miller arrested last December after Wenatchee police said he exposed himself to two 13-year-old Foothills Middle School students and to a 17-year-old West Side High School student. In each case, he allegedly asked directions from the students while they were walking near their schools then exposed himself when they approached his car. Last week, Miller agreed to enter six months of treatment. If he completes it successfully, the city will dismiss three gross misdemeanor charges of lewd conduct. Grant County PUD reopened their campgrounds and many of its day use sites on Monday. The PUD said a lot of the amenities at its sites have been modified to meet with federal and county health department COVID-19 guidelines. The PUD shut down all of its boat launches 
and recreational sites back on March 27th after the state closed its parks and boat lands in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Now the boat launches and most of the recreational sites were reopened on May 8th. On Monday, they opened the golf course and the beach, Crescent Bar, as well as restrooms and picnic areas. Of course, that thunderstorm that rolled through the Wenatchee Valley on Saturday night didn't last very long. It had some power outages, a few trees went down, but really that was about it. Our very own uh, Captain M. Tucker Wagner uh, was able to uh, create a time lapse of Saturday night's storm with our SkyFi cameras. Take a look. Pretty cool stuff from Captain Wagner. It was an interesting night indeed. And finally, uh, this morning, boy, this video went viral. Now, it may be uh, less than ideal time to be graduated from high school. We feel real bad about the class of 2020 with the way things are. But a lot of graduating classes can't say they got a personal message from actor Rain Wilson. You probably remember him as Dwight Schrute on the television show called The Office. Wilson's father is Robert Wilson, who's an artist, and he lives in East Wenatchee. Greetings, Panthers of Wenatchee, Washington. Uh, this is Rain Wilson speaking to you, AKA the actor formerly known as Dwight Schrute, uh, in disguise in my beard, and please forgive my hat. I haven't had my hair cut in about three and a half months, and it's getting embarrassing up under there. Happy graduation, you guys. I can't believe it. You made it, you graduated during some of the darkest days in the history of our country. What terrible times it is to be graduating and my heart goes out to you. It must be incredibly difficult. Um, we have a global pandemic. We have the other global pandemic of, of racism, uh, civil unrest, um, a lot of anger and hurt feelings, a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety, and you are being birthed into this environment into this world and the only thing i would ask is that you use your terrific educations that you got from wenatchee high school to try and make the world a better place we cannot no longer simply seek uh, our own personal comfort uh, it's time as a species on this planet that we rise up and try and make the world better in any way that we possibly can for some it'll be in small ways and some it'll be larger, it doesn't really matter, as long as your focus is bringing love to the equation, bringing people together, and being of service. So put those great educations to use. I'm sorry it's such sad times that you're graduating into, but perhaps this will lend your lives an even greater focus toward what your life's purpose and mission might be. Sending you much love from Shroot Farms, this has been Rain Wilson. Thanks so much, and happy graduation. All of a sudden, I want to eat a beet. Good stuff from Wayne Wilson, Rain Wilson. That's what's making headlines on this Wednesday morning. You better believe we'll be putting a newscast for you together at uh, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 10 o'clock. The handsome and debonair Eric Grandstrom handles sports, and the even more handsome and more debonair Grant Olson in the anchor chair with a preview. Here's Grant. Good morning, Dan. Coming up tonight on the NCW Life Evening News, the fate of the Chelan Douglas lawsuit against Governor Jay Inslee's COVID emergency order will be decided later today. All of your sunny and warm north central Washington weather forecast and Eric Granstrom will be in with a look at sports. That and all the day's news coming up tonight at 5, 6 and 10 on the NCW Life Evening News. We hope you'll join us then, Dan.
Thank you, Grant. You have a news tip? You want to drop us a line? Uh, boy, our viewers are really good about getting a hold of us. I'm impressed. I really am. And there's any number of ways you can do it. You can email us directly, news at ncwlife.com, news at ncwlife.com. ncwlife.com is also our website. If you go to our website and you go to the very top of the page, you'll see the contact us icon. You can click on that and uh, send us a note that way. You can either submit a news tip or just drop us a line or you can go to our Facebook page. A very popular way to get a hold of us and use Facebook Messenger and bloop, drop us a little note. We'd love to hear from you. Going to take a break. When we come back, sports. We're talking Seahawks and Mariners. It's draft day, by the way, for you baseball fans. Sports is coming up. It's one minute away. Watch you wake up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Life Channel. Hi, I'm Dr. Pete Rutherford from Confluence Health. I urge all of you to stay home, stay healthy, and stay safe. You can provide a valuable service to all our region's healthcare professionals, our hospitals, our clinics, nursing homes, assisted living facilities, and adult family homes by donating cloth face masks and gowns to our efforts. If you are able to sew some masks or a gown, there are instructions online at the Chelan Douglas Health District. You can contact the Health District or the Confluence Foundation, and they will arrange to collect them and distribute them to where they are needed. We are fortunate that this is a community that cares about all of us. We will get through this coronavirus together by helping each other. Thank you and be well. If you are looking for dependable car service and repair, visit the good guys at Quick Lube and Tune. They've been keeping cars and trucks in the Wenatchee Valley running smooth for 35 years. Quick Lube and Tune is your hometown shop for a 10-minute oil change, complete tune-ups, alignments, brakes, mufflers, air conditioning service, and more. Get more life out of your vehicle by bringing it to the local guys you can trust at Quick Lube and Tune on South Wenatchee Avenue. We're back at 28 minutes after the hour. Sports and, yep, another event has fallen by the wayside because of the COVID-19 pandemic. We're talking about the Wenatchee Valley Super Ovals annual IBEWNECA Big Rig Night. They announced yesterday, unfortunately, that the event, which was originally scheduled for June 13th, has been postponed. Now, because of the COVID-19 regulations and the fact that the Canadian border is closed, the majority of the big rig teams that reside in Canada can actually Make it down here to little old Wenatchee Town, USA. It's been postponed, not canceled. Wenatchee Valley Super uh, Oval uh, General Manager Jer Jeremy Anders says they're working with the North American Big Rigs. They're going to see if they can find another date to run this event, either in August or perhaps September. Tonight's another practice night at the WVSO. Uh, Jeremy is expecting a pretty good uh, turnout. Uh, practice has been extended actually to 9 o'clock tonight. Once again, the cost is 125 bucks per car. Teams are limited to just five people. And Jeremy says limited concessions will be available tonight to teams that participate in practice night. Colby Parkinson became the first of Seattle's eight rookies to actually sign his contract. He's a big tight end out of Stanford. He was a third-round pick. For the Hawks, ESPN NFL insider Field Yates was the first to report of Parkinson's signing. Rookie contracts are typically for four years. Details of his contract not available. Parkinson joins a crowded tight end room. Seahawks uh, also have Greg Olson, who's a tight end. Will Disley, who's a tight end. Jacob Hollister, Luke Wilson, and fellow 2020 draft pick Stephen Sullivan. The pressure to perform for a first-round draft pick, as you might imagine, is pretty immense. Seattle seed L.J. Collier spent most of his first season with the Seahawks hampered by injuries. Now, while Collier is eager to prove his worth in his second campaign, eight-year pro Bobby Wagner is telling him, hey, don't worry about the pressure. Don't let the pressures of being a first-round pick um, weigh on you and make this game not fun. You know, there's a lot of pressure on, you know, people when they come in, especially as a first-round pick, you are supposed to, um, you are supposed to perform at a certain level because they rated you a certain way. And that's not the case. Everybody learns differently. Everybody grows differently. Everybody 
experiences things differently. And so, um, honestly, I've just been trying to give him my support and, and, and know he's working hard and know he's, um, you know, I think he's very, very passionate about, um, you know, being out there on the field and really making an impact. And, you know, I want to do everything I can in my power to help him do that. Um, you know, I understand maybe um, the first year didn't go as well as everybody would think, but it's kind of like, all right, forget what they say. You know, you got to prove it to yourself and, and, you know, play like you know you're capable of playing. And all of that will be taken care of. Now, Wagner says where you're picked in the draft, that doesn't matter. He says what matters is a person's ability to utilize their talent to its fullest and to put pressure on the opponent to try and stop you. Makes perfect sense to me. News out of the NFL that won't really affect the Seattle Seahawks. The league has told us teams training camps will be held at their home facilities. Seattle, of course, has had training camp and their offices have been at the Virginia Mason Athletic Center in Renton and has been for the last decade. Ten teams who hold training camps off-site will have to make other plans. It includes Dallas, Pittsburgh, Kansas City, and Buffalo. The league felt keeping teams at their facilities would limit exposure to COVID-19. Dallas usually trains in Oxnard, California. The Steelers usually train in Latrobe, Pennsylvania. The Raiders are in the middle of moving to Las Vegas. They typically train in Napa, California, but they could choose to move to their new facility in Henderson, Nevada. Baseball, an extremely shortened Major League Baseball draft begins today. It's normally a 40-round marathon. It takes over, place over many, many days. Now it's just five rounds. They're going to get it done real quick. The Mariners have the sixth overall pick in today's first round. It will also be what's called a competitive balance round. A competitive balance round A today with rounds two through five takes place tomorrow. Seattle will have a total of six picks in the draft. They got an extra pick in the trade for Omar Navarez to the Brewers last year. It'll be a competitive balance round B selection that will follow tomorrow's second round. Don't be surprised if the Mariners select a college pitcher for their first selection today. There's been the usual route for the director of amateur scouting, Scott Hunter. That's what he likes. He likes college pitchers. He's in his fourth year with Seattle. And just like the NFL, Major League Baseball's draft will be done virtually via video conference. And a final reminder, this is very important, folks. We really want you to tune in tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. The Bonanche Panther Booster Club's signing night ceremonies will be televised right here. It'll feature video messages from 20 Wenatchee High School seniors who are going to continue their athletic and educational pursuits at the collegiate level. It's signing night special tomorrow night at 7 right here on the NCW Life Channel, everybody's favorite broadcasting entity. 33 minutes after the hour. I had four obscure holidays today to choose from. Today is National Running Day. Today is National Repeat Day. Today is National Repeat Day. Today is National Chocolate Macaroons Day. Today is National Repeat Day. But nope, we're going to go with uh, National Egg Day. Yes, the incredible edible egg. Most people think there's like five or six different ways to cook an egg. The egg is an incredibly versatile food. You can scramble the eggs, you can fry eggs, you can poach egg, hard boil, soft boil, sunny side up, over easy. There's actually about a hundred different ways you can cook eggs and I think almost everybody associates eggs with breakfast. Of course we can, we normally think of eggs, you think of chickens, but of course all kinds of poultry lay eggs, geese lay eggs, ducks lay eggs, quail eggs in many parts of the world are considered quite the delicacy. How many eggs do we eat? The typical American, and I'm a typical American, uh, the typical American eats about 255 eggs a year. Now, if that seems like a lot, it's actually down. In the 1950s, uh, the average American would eat about 400 eggs a year. So we're not eating as many eggs as we used to. How many egg-laying chickens are there in this country, and just, just in America? About 280 million egg-laying chickens. The most popular of all is the leghorn, of course. First of all, they're lightweight, they grow up very quickly, and they don't go really nuts if you approach the egg because they don't sit on the egg. They just lay the egg and walk away, and so they don't behave all threatening to anybody who tries to approach them as they sit on the egg because leghorns don't do that. So they're perfectly suited for egg production. Uh, some leghorns can lay up to 320 eggs a year. Uh, they started being, they start laying eggs when they're only 19 weeks old, and of course the older the uh, chicken gets, the bigger the egg. There you go, the incredible edible egg. I'm, I'm an egg guy, I like eggs. 
I have it for dinner every once in a while. Uh, today in history, everybody knows about the Midnight Ride of Paul Revere. Most people seem to have forgot about the Midnight Ride of Jack Jewett. Uh, it was just as important as Paul Revere's Midnight Ride. This happened back in 1781, June 3rd, 1781, 239 years ago today. Uh, the British were coming. The British cavalry were on their way down to, to Virginia, and uh, there was going to be a raid. This was not good. Uh, and so uh, Mr. Jack Jewett said, I'm going to go uh, cruise on down to TJ's place, Thomas Jefferson's place, and let the Virginia State Legislature know, hey, something's going on. So he took off about 10 o'clock in the evening. He got really lucky. It was a full moon, so he was able, because he had to go on the back roads. You know, the, the British cavalry were going right down the main highway. That's in red, and so he had to take the other route, which was in blue, and it was through the back roads of the old mountain roads. And luckily, he had a full moon, and he got there. He got there. He ran fast enough to outrun the British, and he warned Thomas Jefferson and the Virginia State Legislature that the British were coming. And I got the heck out of Dodge. Happened 239 years ago today, the midnight ride of Jack Jewett, who, by the way, uh, took a break for three hours at a local tavern. Maybe it's one of the reasons he's one of my favorite Americans. Uh, June 3rd, 1889. That picture is not from June 3rd, 1889. 131 years ago, the very first long distance electric power transmission line in this country was done. It was completed. It ran 14 miles from uh, the Willamette Falls to downtown Portland, Oregon. It was considered a landmark. It was in 1889. People were freaked out about electricity. I don't know about this, but they were able to do it. A 14 mile uh, electric power line um, from Willamette Falls to Portland, Oregon. It was the first one ever in the United States. That picture's from Grand Coulee Dam, by the way. <laughs> Sorry, I cheated. But anyway, it's a, it's a cool little thing. I wonder if they're still using the transmission line. Um, the Battle of Dunkirk ended on this date 80 years ago today. I had never seen the movie Dunkirk, and I finally saw it, I don't know, about a month ago. I was channel flipping. That's what this means. And I saw the movie. It's really good. I was familiar with the story of, of the Battle of Dunkirk. I still can't believe that the Germans took a break. If they didn't take a break, it would have been an entirely different story. But they stopped long enough that they were able to get uh, 338,226 French and British soldiers off the mainland of Europe and off to Great Britain. Of course, it was a total German victory. The Allies were in full retreat, but it could have been a lot worse. On day one of the evacuation of Dunkirk, only 7,669 Allied soldiers were evacuated. By the end of the eighth day, they were up to that 338,000 mark. Over 800 boats participated. Basically, if it could float, it was get across the channel, get as many people in your boat as possible, and get to Great Britain. But again, if the Germans hadn't paused, for a few days on their assault, would have been an entirely different story. That was 80 years ago today, the Battle of Dunkirk came to an end. And 31 years ago today, the Tiananmen Square incident came to an end. Uh, China said, enough is enough. You guys have been protesting for seven weeks of occupation in Tiananmen Square. We're not doing this anymore. And uh, the government of China sent the troops in. How many people died? We don't really know. It was all, nobody knows really. Hundreds of thousands, they figure, uh, may have been killed, thousands of wounded in and outside of Tiananmen Square. Um, a lot of riots. It was not pretty. Not pretty. And finally, the government rolled the tanks in Tiananmen Square 31 years ago today, 39 minutes after the hour. Two birthdays. The Gong Show was so huge in the 1970s. I love the Gong Show. Uh, Chuck Barris hosted the Gong Show. He created the newlywed game, and he created the dating game. And he hosted the Gong Show. And when he wrote his biography back in 1984 called Confessions of a Dangerous Mind, uh, he told everybody he worked secretly for the CIA, which he didn't. He later admitted that he basically made the whole thing up. If you're going to write an autobiography, you lie like crazy. What are they going to do, right? Nobody ever writes an autobiography to make themselves look bad. Chuck Barris, born in the state of 1929. Passed away at the age of 87 in 2017. And happy 34th birthday to Rafael Nadal, the Spanish tennis player. Here's a hint for all you tennis players out there. Never take this guy on in clay. He's essentially unbeatable. Uh, of course, the French Open is played on clay. The French Open is supposed to be going on right now. Of course, it ain't. Uh, he's won 12 French Open titles. That's so far beyond anybody else's comprehension. It's incredible. He's also won four U.S. Open titles. He won a couple of Wimbledons and an Australian Open title, the career Grand Slam. 
Rafael Nadal. Pretty entertaining to watch on the tennis court. He's 34 years old today. He's got a lot of good years left on him. All right, 40 minutes after the hour, Mike McNaughty has got an opinion. Wow. We'll check in with Mike. It's about uh, local businesses. When we come back, you're watching Wake Up in Angie Valley on the NCW Live channel. Hi, my name is Manuel Navarro, Chief Operating Officer at Columbia Valley Community Health. Patient safety is our top priority, including providing care that just can't wait. With enhanced safety precautions, we want to ensure you that we're able to continue providing safe and efficient in-person care at our clinic. From in-car check-in, ongoing screening, immediate rooming, your family can get the safe care that they deserve here at Columbia Valley Community Health. At Town Toyota, we believe in our community, and we're proud to support this broadcast of local sports. Town Toyota defines reliability and value in both its products and in the dealership itself. We are home to legendary products like the RAV4, Highlander, and Camry, not to mention Tundras and Tacoma trucks. Of course, we offer service for everything we sell and a great selection of pre-owned and certified vehicles as well. So enjoy the game and visit Town Toyota for all your automotive needs. I have a hereditary bone disease from my, the female side of my family. My bone loss was so significant that you could almost see the roots. I became embarrassed and I started covering my mouth. Eating became very difficult as far as I stopped eating apples, corn on the cob, things that you just eat as it is without utensils. Dr. Davis was my dentist prior to having implants. We talked about traditional dentures or implants, and implants was the only way really that I could go. John Divis and all of his office staff, they checked on me throughout all the processes. I would never go anyplace else. Today, I can eat corn on the cob. I can have apples. Thanks to Dr. John Divis and his staff, I have my smile back. I feel more confident. I am me again. This is John Divis. Let our team help you solve your dental needs. We know times are a little different right now, but we wanted to let you know that we have you covered. So during this time, you can focus more about the important things in life, like your home, friends, yourself, and your family. This is the best tea party ever. If you have family or friends who need guidance through this unique time, please share this valuable information. We want them to be able to enjoy what matters in life. So you search all over town to find out what you're looking for. You find it, you wait in line, you pay for the item, you bring it home, but then you find out it's not right or it doesn't work or whatever. And you try to take it back and sure, there's some places where this is no problem, but, but not everywhere, not by any stretch, okay? This is the, one of the reasons why folks, why retail services like Amazon are such a success. Not only because of the, their convenience in returning an item for any reason, but because of the negative experience many of us had when attempting to do so with a local realtor, retailer. Customer service folks, hey, many businesses claim to practice customer service, but there really aren't too many that are doing it the right way. Many of them think they're doing you a favor by taking your money in the first place. Not good. This is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion. Don't worry, 
All the fun is around the corner. There's no better time to get ready than now with Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa Spring Sale. Stock Up and Save Sale is now going on in store and online at bluelagoonpoolandspa.com. Even pool heaters are on sale. Financing available upon approval. Credit 24 month, no interest with equal payments. Stop by today or order online at bluelagoonpoolandspa.com. Free water testing available in store or curbside. Don't wait. The sale is going on now through June 1st. When you think of doghouse motorsports, you might think of motorcycles, but there's a lot more in this house. How about Honda power equipment from snowblowers to lawnmowers to generators and even water pumps? Honda is the brand that sets the standards. Perhaps you need an ATV or UTV. The doghouse has the largest selection anywhere. Did we mention watercraft and snowmobiles? And of course, we have motorcycles too. Back it up with terrific customer service and you have Wenatchee's best motorsports store five years running. Isn't it time for you to be in the doghouse? Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere is your place for famous blues, brews, and barbecue. We are your one-stop bar and grill, serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week. Hi, Justin here, owner of Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere. Looking for a fun night out? Join us at Club Crow. We have live bands to rock the night away, comedy to make you laugh, and if that's not enough, we have poker every Monday and Wednesday night. Club Crow in Cashmere has it all. Check out our Facebook event page for dates and times. Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere, the coolest place in town. I'm Tom from Alpine Air Heating and Cooling. At Alpine Air, we think of ourselves as customer service oriented retailers. When you make an appointment, please visit our store, meet our people, see our shop. We are serious about heating and air conditioning. Carrier and Alpine Air are offering huge factory rebates and financing options for all your needs. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Alpine Air. Call for your free replacement estimate. Heat and air, call Alpine Air, 662-6846. We are back, sitting at 57 degrees. We're expecting quite a bit of sunshine today. Highs will be in the upper 70s, both today and tomorrow. A little breezy at times. We've got complete forecast details that come your way. We want to repeat the top stories on this Wednesday. And, of course, we begin with the Chelan Douglas Health District, who's expecting to submit a new application to move into the next phase of the COVID-19 recovery. And they're expecting to make that application in the not-too-distant future. Governor Inslee's Safe Start Plan allows counties to move into phases of greater and greater economic activity as they show progress in the fight against coronavirus, especially if they show a slowdown in the rate of infection. Now, the two-county Board of Health voted on Monday to make a new application after their first attempt was rejected last month. 27 of Washington's 39 counties have moved on from phase one to phase two in the uh, part of the four-phase plan that the governor has issued. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Malcolm Butler says the new state guidelines appear to be within the reach of the district. After consulting with Dr. Rutherford and Barry and reviewing our ongoing performance, uh, I am comfortable recommending a graduated reopening of the economy. Uh, this uh, guidance from the governor does state that the first move is to have a recommendation from the health officer to move towards a variance. And I would like you all to hear this as my formal recommendation that we do so. Um, although our transmission rate is significantly higher than in other parts of the state, we are experiencing a low rate of severe disease. Our medically frail populations appear to be sufficiently insulated and our healthcare systems now have sufficient bed, PPE and testing capacity to reopen the economy. I would recommend that the Chelan Douglas Health District put together a work group of six thought leaders to develop a variance proposal which is strong enough to overcome the clear epidemiologic hurdle of having the second highest COVID transmission rate in the state. Now, the current rate of new COVID-19 cases in Chelan and Douglas counties is estimated at 93 per 100,000 people. Well, the lawsuits were filed back on May 22nd. They've had a couple of hearings. Of course, what they're trying to do is end Governor Jay Inslee's stay-at-home COVID-19 order. But the plaintiffs in that case... Well, today's the day. This afternoon, we're going to learn a lot more about uh, the fate of this case. Attorney Joel Ard withdrew one lawsuit against the governor in Douglas County so he could focus on the Chelan County lawsuit. Judge Kristen Ferreira is hearing that lawsuit. Forty-six plaintiffs are on board. State attorneys want the case moved to Thurston County. As you probably know, the court held a preliminary hearing on Monday, and here's some of what happened there. We did file an amended complaint. 
uh, we heard certainly from uh, your colleague in Okanagan who was sitting by designation in Douglas, uh, concerns about the possibility that the Chelan Douglas County Health District could be subject to uh, different rules if there were different orders. I think your honor raised a uh, very similar concern on Thursday uh, when we uh, set out, uh, we understood, uh, we certainly believed and still believe that venues proper in the home counties of the plaintiffs uh, and the plaintiffs uh, preferred to have uh, venue in their respective home counties. Uh, out of an abundance of caution, I believe that we are filing, uh, even as we speak, uh, a motion to amend. I think that that's appropriate in the interest of justice. It addresses very specific concerns that both courts raised as to having uh, division. Uh, it does add uh, into this court uh, most of the Douglas County plaintiffs. Uh, the members, uh, those plaintiffs, both in Douglas and Chelan County, who are members of the Chelan Douglas County Board of Health, uh, have withdrawn as plaintiffs, uh, given the uh, possibility of some other involvement by that entity, uh, so that they aren't uh, in any way playing two roles uh, in the litigation. I think we can kind of safely assume that plaintiffs correctly recognize that their complaint had a big problem with venue because they named the governor who is a state official acting in virtue of his office and the proclamation uh, was issued in Thurston County. And so the case arose there from, that's why they amended the complaint, obviously. But it's really a simple question here. It's whether when a state official issues an executive order, a proclamation in a state of emergency that has <clears throat> statewide effect, does the cause of action arise either in Thurston County where the proclamation was issued or everywhere? There's no middle ground that the court can reach here because plaintiff's claims do not hinge on their residence in Douglas County or in Chelan County. Their assertion of venue does not hinge on any specific event happening in Douglas or Chelan County. Their event hinges simply on the fact that the proclamation touches Douglas County and Chelan County and every other county in the state. I'm going to give the plaintiffs an opportunity to brief the issue of venue now that they've added additional parties but I think the state has a right to have this, this venue motion heard as soon as possible. And um, I don't want too much time to pass because this is an issue that if it needs to be transferred to Thurston County, uh, that needs to be done sooner rather than later because this is, there are multiple lawsuits and we, I mean, the state is having to, f to fight this on multiple fronts. And that is something that typically the statutes anticipate not to have happen. Now plaintiffs in that case include three Wenatchee City Council members, a couple of pastors from Grace City Church, State Republican Committee woman Marcy Collins, Windmill Restaurant owner Kevin Smith, and NCLB Life host and former State Representative Carrie Kandata. And finally, on this Wednesday morning, as you know, folks from uh, throughout the Wenatchee Valley gathered Monday night along the sidewalks of Chelan Avenue in front of the courthouse to protest the death of George Floyd with coverage from that demonstration on Monday night. Here's our very own Kyle Montgomery. try whatever and this is the only thing that's here and I, I need to do something something is better than nothing I want to do more but um, at least happy to be out here and support about 1,000 people protested loudly but peacefully outside the Chelan County Courthouse and along Chelan Avenue Monday evening it was nothing like the scenes of violence and looting that have played out in other communities following the death of George Floyd, a black Minneapolis man who died as a police officer kneeled on his neck for more than nine minutes. Wenatchee protesters expressed their anger and frustration with speeches, chanting, and by waving signs as honking motorists passed. And witness police murder and brutalize us without repercussions. This is why we continue to demonstrate and engage in discussions about this. We deem necessary. At one point, a group of more than 100 people broke off to march from Chelan Avenue down Rondo Avenue, then north on Mission Street and past the Wenatchee Police Department before returning to the park. Wenatchee Police Captain Edgar Reinfeld said the police presence was intentionally minimal and he is not surprised there were no issues. So the reason, and one of the hugest reasons that 
protests and other demonstrations here in the Wenatchee area are successful is the way people choose to behave, first of all. But a huge component is almost uniformly organizers of these activities call us. And we have frank conversations and we talk very simply ahead of time. We don't see the violence because we have a great community. We don't see the looting because we have a great community. We have people in our community who respect each other and respect the things that belong to each other enough that we don't have to do that. We have crime here. We have theft. We have problems. But thankfully, we don't have those kind of problems because of the way people choose to be here. And it's an amazing thing. Get registered to vote. Reporting with NCW Life, I'm Kyle Montgomery. And thank you for that report, Kyle. It is about 55 minutes after the hour. We're going to take a break and come back and do your weather forecast one more time. It's looking pretty good today. And tomorrow, things start changing on Friday, and we could get some rain. Certainly cooler temperatures on Saturday and Sunday. Forecast details are next. You're watching Wake Up in Anchor Valley on the NCW Life channel. Need a break from reality? Central Washington Water has a showroom full of possibilities with service and support to keep you soaking and giving you the absolute best ownership experience. Free flow plug and go spas for as little as $45 a month. There's a hot tub for everyone at Central Washington Water. Shop screen to screen, in store or a backyard consultation with one of our wellness team members. Central Washington Water, your water experts. Bring the whole family up to Stormy Mountain Brewing and local public house in historic downtown Chelan. Applewood smoked brisket, street style tacos, and our award winning barbecue rubs and sauces. Our meals pair perfectly with our exciting lineup of craft ales, made right here in Chelan. We've got room for big groups, or give us a call for catering. So grab the kids and check out the fun at Stormy Mountain Brewing and local public house located in the heart of Chelan. Collins Fashions is now almost open. Following safety guidelines, call ahead for personal shopping. There's nothing like a new pair of sandals or outfit to lift your spirits. Tommy Bahama says fun in a stylish way. Mother of the bride or groom special celebrations? Collins has a beautiful variety of dresses for all occasions. Need a little something to make you smile? Brighton jewelry and handbags fit us all. Check out the Collins Facebook site or call ahead for personalized shopping and curbside service. Collins Fashions in downtown Wenatchee. It's been a year like no other, but we won't let our high school seniors leave without a chance to honor them in the way they've earned. NCW Life Channel is proud to bring you the virtual graduations of Wenatchee, Eastmont, Cashmere, and Westside High Schools. Thanks to the support from Wenatchee Wear, local authentic threads designed to create awareness and empower indigenous peoples. Town Auto Group, we love this town. Gold Construction, proudly building quality custom homes throughout the valley since 1980. See our broadcast schedule at ncwlife.com. And one more item of business to take care of before we cut you loose and send you down the road on this Wednesday. And that's the weather forecast. And here's what we're looking at today. A lot of sunshine today. Looking pretty good. About 79 for the afternoon high. A northwest wind about 6 to 13 miles an hour. For the record yesterday, we had 78. And we did have some high clouds. We kind of kept the heat down a little bit. Our normal high for this time of the year, right around 75 or 76. So just a little bit above normal today. 51 for the overnight low tonight. Tomorrow we do it all over again. Maybe a little cooler. Uh, it's about 78 degrees. We're going to have a few passing clouds overnight tonight. So we're not going to get particularly uh, a great deal warmer if warmer at all on Thursday, but still quite a bit of sunshine today and quite a bit of sunshine Thursday, more than we had yesterday. Uh, overnight low about 53, but it's going to be breezy today, breezy tonight, breezy on Thursday. Now we start calming down Thursday night with an overnight low of 53 and we get rid of the wind, but we welcome in the clouds. It'll be mostly cloudy by the time we're done with the day on Friday. We'll start out with sunshine Friday morning. It's not going to last as a slow moving weather system starts to move itself into the north central Washington area. So look for quite a bit of cloud cover on Friday at a high of 79 degrees, 54 for the overnight low to, on Friday night. And that's when we start talking about a little bit of rain. It's Friday night into Saturday. You don't see it graphically, but there is about a 30% chance of rain Friday night with an overnight low of about 54. Best chance of rain, certainly Saturday. Again, uh, it's, not a, it's not a fast moving storm, which when you have a slow moving system, it's not really a storm, it's just a system, but it's kind of plodding along. Uh, that means uh, almost everybody could get some light rain on Saturday and Saturday night, as you can see, cooler. I've only 73 on Saturday, 70 on Sunday, 
and about 70 on Monday before the sunshine returns with a vengeance on Tuesday. So the best chance of rain Saturday afternoon for certain. All right, have a great Wednesday. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.